Rubisco, the first enzyme. Rubisco, much less commonly known for its long and complicated scientific name, Rubisculose 1,5-biphosphate carboxylase oxygenase, is a central enzyme in photosynthesis that catalyzes CO2 carbon fixation reactions. It is speculated to be the most abundant protein on Earth, as it is existent within every organism that undergoes photosynthesis and molecular synthesis. Let's back up and define some of the words I just used so we're all able to understand what exactly I just said and define some words for later. An enzyme is a protein that creates a chemical reaction in the body or speeds up a chemical reaction. One of the best examples for this is our metabolism. Our foods are broken down into smaller molecules by chemical reactions that can technically happen by themselves, but enzymes makes the process much faster and therefore more efficient. Photosynthesis is the process by which green plants transform water, sunlight, and carbon dioxide into simple sugars for the plant's food and generates oxygen as a byproduct. Why do we need sugars exactly? We need sugar because it's a carbohydrate, the primary source of energy for the human body. What is ATP for? We need ATP, or adenosine triphosphate, as the energy currency for cells. It allows the cell to store energy briefly and transform it within the cell to support chemical reactions. Rubisco takes carbon dioxide from the air and attaches it to rubisculose biphosphate, a short sugar chain with five atoms, which is also a component of photosynthesis. This process is a part of the larger cycle known as the Calvin cycle. In the Calvin cycle, carbon dioxide atoms are incorporated into organic molecules in a process known as fixing and used to build three carbon sugars. This process is powered by the sun. The reactions of the Calvin cycle take place in the stroma, the inner space of the chloroplasts, the space in plant cells where photosynthesis takes place. Rubisco is suspected to be the original enzyme because of its primary function to fix carbon from the atmosphere using energy from the sun to power its functions. Rubisco originally evolved in the Archaean period, 4 to 2.5 billion years ago, when there was little to no oxygen in the atmosphere, and bacteria and archaea, an organism similar to bacteria, needed a way to produce adenosine triphosphate, or ATP, to survive in the oxygen-thin climates of early Earth. By today's standards, Rubisco is extremely slow as far as enzymes go, fixing only three carbon atoms a second compared to the thousands of other molecules fixed by other enzymes in today's plants. However, it was extremely important back in the Archaean period because it was the only enzyme able to produce oxygen which eventually formed the atmosphere that allowed for larger organisms to exist. Rubisco makes up 20-25% to 25 of the soluble protein mass in leaves, and is so abundant worldwide that it is made on Earth at a rate of about 1,000 kilograms per second. This is because it is so slow, plants compensate by producing mass quantities of Rubisco. About half of each plant cell is taken up by chloroplasts full of Rubisco. It comes in four main forms, with form 1 being the most common. Each form is present in different organisms, with form 1 present in terrestrial and marine plants, chemoautotrophic bacteria, cyanobacteria, and eukaryotic algae. The other forms are more specific and will not be covered in this video. Another reason Rubisco is so inefficient is because it lacks specificity. Binding carbon dioxide and oxygen alike, it will attach an oxygen atom to a sugar chain that needed carbon dioxide and produce a faulty product, which the plant cell then has to go back and correct. The structure of Rubisco looks like a hollow barrel with caps on each end and has a central solvent channel running through the middle, allowing mainly water to flow through the enzyme and wet it for activation. This channel defines Rubisco's fourfold axis of symmetry. It has 16 subunits, otherwise known as amino acids, that make up its structure, making it a heterohexadecamer. Ooh, big names. The subunits are split into large and small subunits. However, that is as far as we shall go in this video. Now, why are geneticists still looking at Rubisco to try and improve it via genetic modification? They're looking to improve it because it would speed up the whole process of photosynthesis if Rubisco could be sped up and be more specific so as not to mix up oxygen and carbon dioxide. One way this could benefit humanity is that improved photosynthesis means a greater crop yield. There has recently been progress into this Rubisco research as scientists have found a way to express Rubisco in E. coli.
which is an easily manipulatable bacterial host that the researchers can now use to replicate Rubisco until mutations arise in it that are favorable to improve crop yields. To sum up, Rubisco is so important to our everyday lives because it's the main source of protein in the plants that we and many other creatures eat for food. It is also important for the evolution of the Earth and everything living on it, because without it, Earth would still look like Mustafar from Star Wars, a planet riddled with volcanoes and lacking an atmosphere. Thank you for listening to my brief look into the world's first enzyme.